Hello, what is going on? Oh, uh, wow. I have absolutely no idea how this is gonna go. I don't know, I don't know. My name is Greta. Um, nice to meet you, como estas? Como se va? It is currently my lunch time. I work as a UX designer in corporate America. That has nothing to do with this. Well, maybe it does a little bit. Maybe it does. Let's backtrack a little bit. So I, I would say like 90%, no, 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 95%. If you're that other 5%, then like, how do you do it? At least of my generation experiences some kind of mental health problem. I don't want to call it a problem because that's part of the problem is calling it a problem. Uh, we really are out here uh, is struggling. We are is struggling. But um, for me specifically, I have dealt with anxiety for gosh dang, a long time. And it doesn't help that I am type A. It doesn't help that I am uh, first generation. <laughs> Just sprinkle that on top. My therapist was like, hey girl, why don't you write down all of the intrusive thoughts? Whenever you have an intrusive thought, write it down. It kind of helps you to do this thing that she always talks about. And when she first talked about it, I was like, girl, what? Looking at your intrusive thoughts objectively. So it's literally like, don't judge yourself. If you have a negative thought, notice it. So acknowledge this intrusive thought. What happens is when you kind of suppress these thoughts or like kind of push them down, the fear of those thoughts increases. Because if you avoid something, you're telling yourself that's a negative thought. And then after you acknowledge it, kind of realize that it's just a thought. It's not a prediction of the future because you're not a fortune teller. I mean, if you are, like, hit me up. Okay, so that was her homework for me. She was like, I want you to write down any time you have an intrusive thought. And I was like, okay, I can do that. That's easy. But then I was like, why don't I just film myself every time that I have an intrusive thought and I'm gonna rationalize through it and post it on the internet. Maybe, just maybe, this will show you kind of how you can better greet, I guess that's a good word, greet your intrusive thoughts. So today's Monday. I see my therapist on Friday morning. Don't judge me, please, <laughs> please. Hello. It hasn't even been that long. Is that a bad thing? No, it's not a bad thing. Just means we have some room for improvement. So I am here doing work and we are starting this project. My manager just kind of asked the team of UX designers and was like, can we mock this design up? Because I'm the overachiever, I was the first one to say, yeah, of course, I'll do it, I'll do it. And now I'm like, oh God, okay, how am I gonna do this? I'm not gonna do it well. Someone else on the team is gonna be able to do it better. What if I didn't understand his ask correctly? And before I judge myself and say, Greta, shut up, <laughs> which I want to do. But instead of thinking that, I have to realize, okay, I don't know, am I doing this correct? There we go, I'm having it, wow. I'm having an intrusive thought about my intrusive thought. I'm, I'm doubtful if I'm even approaching my intrusive thought correctly. I'm gonna say, I, my manager responded and was like, awesome, all right, let's get it done. And if he didn't believe that I could do it, he probably would have reached out to someone specifically. And I haven't even touched the design yet. Like I haven't even tried to create this design yet. So I can't 
it's not fair to tell myself that I can't do it before I have even tried to do it. Also, when it comes to like feeling like I can't do something, I procrastinate a lot. But no, 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 no. We're gonna do it now. If I get confused, I can always ask him a question, okay? If I feel like I don't understand what he needs, I can always ask him to clarify. It's not a big deal. So just a little update. I finished in record time. It took me like 35 minutes to do what my manager asked me to do and what's crazy is right after I was telling you how I was freaking out thinking like oh my gosh I'm not gonna know how to do this he kind of explained more in detail he was like sorry I actually wasn't being very clear this is kind of what I'm going for he gave me an example I know he would have explained in more detail if I would have asked but I was freaking out and of course it's like the universe was like don't worry sis we got you and i finished it and he was like thank you so much uh i'll see you at the meeting at four and it's good to go <sighs> i came downstairs to eat the clementine and i had an intrusive thought and then i ran upstairs <laughs> to get my camera and came back downstairs. Now that I think about it, I'm like, is this even an intrusive thought? I don't know. Do people have different definitions of what an intrusive thought is? For me, if someone asks me, hey Greta, what is an intrusive thought? For me, it's essentially anything that comes to my mind, any thought that pops into my mind during the day that makes me feel shitty. So I came downstairs to get a snack because my sister is starving. I didn't bring my phone down with me. And I was just, as I was eating my clementine, I was like, should I go get my phone? I might miss a message from my boss. What if my mom calls me? What if my boyfriend calls me? Essentially what I also notice with intrusive thoughts is that they kind of take you out of the present moment. They make me freak out about the future. So when I'm freaking out about the future, I'm not being present and I'm not being mindful. But when you don't give them that power and you don't listen to them and you don't act on them and you just acknowledge them for what they are, which are thoughts, then you can stay present and enjoy your life, you know? I deserve to enjoy my Clementine. Something that was huge for me that I learned from my therapist was that anxiety is a necessary emotion. There's an optimal level of anxiety that you should have because when you have that little bit of anxiety, it's what encourages you to reach your goals. It's what encourages you to be on time to your appointments to your meetings to whatever it is so i always had the mentality that i needed to get rid of anxiety that i needed to literally like flick her out of my life like kick her out of my life you need to manage it that's the difference because it's still gonna be there sometimes it'll be there in unnecessary moments in moments that it doesn't make sense for it to be there but it's when you learn how to acknowledge it and not push it away, but don't let it control you. <coughs> oh my God, geez. Hello. I have been experiencing lately like some aches and pains. I actually have an autoimmune condition and it's really, it sucks. I've noticed recently that my health anxiety has kind of spiked. I notice sometimes I'll feel a very odd pain like right here and my brain <laughs> goes straight to, oh my God, this is it. I'm dying. I'm having a heart attack. 
that's it. That's what just happened to me right now. I was having kind of like a burning sensation like right here or like a dull ache. It's it's like I've, I've already talked to my doctor about it. She's already told me it's normal with the condition I have. Um, she's told me already just to do stretching. She's already told me uh, what we need to do and I still think I'm having a heart attack. Like, que Dios me bendiga y ya me voy. And because the symptoms of panic are so real and they're so physical and you can literally have chest pain. And chest pain is, everyone knows, chest pain can is sometimes means heart attack. So it's like, and it's really hard, girl. Like, trust me, it's taken me years to be able to this sounds weird, but like have a panic attack or an anxiety attack or overwhelming anxiety and just sit through it. With COVID, literally health anxiety has just spiked because of COVID because we're in a panini. And with that, and I was kind of talking about this yesterday, which I actually, <laughs> I just did it. I'm guilty of it. I'm exposing myself. I Googled my symptoms and I immediately regretted it because I was like, okay, According to Google, I have like two days left to live, like that, that's it. It's like a compulsion. You just feel this need to satisfy your worry by looking up your symptoms. And you want somebody to tell you that it's normal. You want, you want to see like, okay, I am not dying. Like you want that reassurance. You just have to break that cycle and stop acting on these feelings of like, dread and anxiety and worry um have to get back to work now but yeah hello it's me again <laughs> i as you can see i'm doing a face mask but i was on social media and y you know what, what i'm about you know where i'm going with this right you know like anytime anyone mentions social media, they're gonna say something like, it made me feel so crappy. So that's what I'm gonna say too, you guessed it. <laughs> but I was scrolling on social media and I started to feel like so behind in life, which is crazy because I know that doesn't exist. There's no guidebook that tells you by 25 years old, you need to X, Y, Z, or else you are, there's no point. I wanted to tell you about this Instagram account that I follow that I love, oh my God. The Anxiety Healer. Um, her name is Allison Seponera. She's a licensed therapist. She's a CBT expert, so she's a great resource if like right now you can't go to therapy or you're like can't afford it because girl, I get you, it's expensive, it's expensive. One of the exercises she suggested is when you have an anxious thought, um, like for example me, I was thinking like Ugh, some of my friends are already senior level in their jobs. You replace that anxious or negative or invasive thought with a positive one. Um, so instead of thinking that, I can replace that thought with, I'm so lucky that I have a job that is paying me to live, <laughs> essentially. It just helps to think about the good things so that you're not sending yourself in a existential crisis, terrible, anxious, everything is horrible, I'm gonna die feeling. We're all good. We're all good. We're chill. I always feel like whenever, now doing this video, whenever I turn the camera on, I'm just like, hey, it's me again. I'm feeling anxious again. I've been working for like a couple of hours and I actually had a pretty good streak today. It was very positive until until i got on a meeting and a lot of my meetings typically i am the only woman in the room and the entire time i was just thinking should i speak no i don't know what i'm talking about or i would say something i would ask a question and then immediately in my head i would be like 
why did you ask that question? That was so stupid. But the funny thing is that every time I asked a question, they would say, oh, that's a good question. Actually, I was just thinking about that or just kind of validating. And I don't know if it has to do with the fact that I am or I was the only female in the room. Obviously, I'm sure that like contributes to some of my insecurity. I also noticed I started to feel kind of anxious. A lot of the time, it's for no reason. I am sitting at my desk, I'm not really doing anything that stressful, and I just feel anxious. I'm actually still feeling this way. Um, I still feel a little tight chested, and this is the first thing that goes. When I'm anxious, the first sign of my anxiety is my heart rate, it always goes up. I wanted to go through with you the different steps that my therapist suggested. I have a little notebook where I write all my notes for my therapy sessions, what she suggested for me to do when I start to feel anxious. Okay, so when anxiety strikes, the first thing that you have to do is name what you are feeling, physical, emotional. So for example, right now, I am noticing that my breathing is shallow. I feel my heart rate a little bit higher than usual. Okay, so that's the first step is accepting what you're feeling and describing what you're feeling. Second thing is contemplate outside of you. So connect to your five senses. And you don't have to do this out loud, you can do it in your head. But obviously since you're here, we're gonna do it together. So I'm noticing I'm feeling the chair under my butt. I'm feeling my shoes, or not my shoes, I'm feeling my feet on the floor, on the cold floor. I hear the birds, I love the birds. The point of that is to bring you back to the present moment, because when you're anxious, you're not thinking about, you kind of lose that connection with the present moment, with your now. The third thing is act. For example, if, if I started to feel anxious, like I did during the meeting, I just continue to engage in the meeting. I might ask another question. I might start to take notes. It kind of further grounds you and further brings you back into the present moment type of situation. Number four, breathing. This one, like whenever someone tell me to breathe, I'd be like, like goodbye. Like you're not helping me. You're just making it worse, but it really does help. Always make your exhales longer than your inhales. So you can inhale for five count and inhale into your belly, not into your chest. So, and then hold for three seconds. And then exhale for like six seconds. And then she said smile. Seeming like you're happy kind of convinces yourself that you are. And also tells your body that you're safe, that there's no reason anxiety has to ruin the day. So there we go. I am having a avocado, strawberry, peanut butter smoothie. And it's like 10.30 p.m. Mm. So you know why I'm here. I started to have some thoughts. You know like those moments where you literally feel like you have absolutely nobody in your life. If you're just sitting there and you're like, wow, nobody cares about me. <laughs> it always goes back to social media. I was on Instagram and I just saw people like, we're still in a pandemic, right? But I just saw people on like beach trips and just trips with all their friends. And I was like, oh my God, I have no friends. Nobody cares about me. If I disappeared, no one would care. It's actually kind of crazy because I was scrolling as I was still scrolling. I was thinking this as I was scrolling just now. And I scrolled onto, I think I mentioned their account earlier in this video. So the Anxiety Healer on Instagram. And she has a post about CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, which I wanted to learn about. It's like she knew what I was thinking. I swear our phones listen to us. But anyways, it's like a carousel of all these different ways to reframe your negative thoughts or your invasive thoughts. And one of the one of the negative thoughts that she shows you how to reframe is nobody likes me, which is like 
wow, literally how I feel right now. And she says, instead of thinking nobody likes me, try this. That's not a true statement. I have people in my life who care about me and want to be around me. I do get along well with other people now that I think of it. Also, I know not everyone will adore and like me in life and that's okay. Another one is, I can't cope. And, re and try to reframe it as, that's not necessarily true. If I couldn't cope, I'd drop down dead or burst into flames. Yet, here I am. I'm doing my best and still learning. If I believe that I can cope, then I can start facing my fears. <clears throat> Hello. I'm like, how is it Thursday? What did I even do this week? I've noticed pretty much since I woke up, I've been kind of in my head about my health situation. What's really annoying about this inflammatory arthritis stuff that I've been dealing with is that sometimes, like I was saying, I think I was talking about this Tuesday, but it just like sometimes it just gives me very strange symptoms it just, like sometimes I'll think like, what if my doctor missed something or didn't notice something? Or what if she like misdiagnosed me? It's making me like not productive because I'm trying to work, but I keep thinking about it and I keep wanting to Google my symptoms just to get some kind of like relief. But I know like every time I Google my symptoms, it just makes me even more anxious because then I realize like I learned about all the other possibilities that it could be. And so I'm just trying to, okay, like feel, yes, I'm, my hand's hurting. That's, that's okay. My doctor already told me it's fine. We've already looked at it. We already know what it is. And then just come back to the present, keep working, keep participating in my present tasks sometimes you try to like you know give it like observe it and not judge yourself and try to bring yourself back to the present but sometimes it's harder than other days like yesterday i felt like it was easier than today that is my update for this lovely dreary thursday morning ah, hi when I get in these cycles of like, I'm having an anxious thought, I acknowledge it, I ground myself in the present, it comes back, I acknowledge it, ground myself, like if it keeps coming back, then I like to just break up what I'm doing. So if I'm working and if I can, because sometimes you obviously can't just like step away, but we're working from home so we can kind of, sort of, so I'm gonna like go downstairs, just like walk around. If that happens and you can, you should go for a walk. It's a beautiful day, I should definitely do that. So go for a walk. If you have a cat, which I should go pet her. <laughs> um, get a snack. Um, like do some jumping jacks, put on a good tune, put on some good music and dance around. My booty is becoming like a pancake because I'm sitting down all day. Anxiety, she's not here to, to harm us. She's not here to mess up our day. She's just here to warn us about things, but sometimes it's not useful, honey. Sometimes it's not helpful. Boop. Hello. <laughs> oh my god. I have hiccups and they won't go away. I've been working for a little bit. 
I'm so tired. I was gonna say, I have my therapist appointment in like five minutes and I'm like, <laughs> after making this video, I, and you know how, I mean, most therapists will be like, so how have you been? How's your week been? Tell me how you're feeling emotionally. And just, <laughs> I mean, you've witnessed everything that's happened. So like, how do I tell her? How do I begin to tell her what I've been up to? I wanted to say thank you for not judging me, for <laughs> listening to my worries and my fears and my anxious mind. Um, this was a very different experience and very obviously very vulnerable because to literally say the thoughts that you're having is scary, especially to put it on the internet, but I feel like it's helped me to know, or I guess just like throughout the week, I feel like I've practiced articulating how I'm feeling. So it helps like next time if I feel anxious and I'm with a friend or if I'm with my boyfriend or whoever, I can better communicate how I'm feeling. Anxiety is very real. It's physical. You feel it emotionally, mentally, spiritually. You feel it in every aspect of your life, to be honest, okay? If you're an anxious friend like me, then just keep going. We got this. And I'll leave some of the Instagram accounts that I love and that I follow. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram and DM me. We can chat about anxiety, chat about our feelings. Um, yeah, let's, let's hang out. Let's hang out on Instagram. But um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video very soon. Bye.